to Hopeland Church this morning. We hope you're ready for an awesome service today. My name is Crystal Gale. This is my husband, Sean, and we get to pastor this awesome church. Yes, we do. We love you, Hopeland Church. Stoked you could be a part of our online gathering, and we hope you enjoy worship and the word. Um, if you're new with us today, please text the word new to 323-405-3232. We want you to stay connected. We want you to know what's going on in our church community, and that is the best way to do it. And before we dive into worship here, I just want to ask everybody, wherever you are on your phone or uh, you're watching on a computer, whatever it is, please share this with somebody. Mm -hmm. Share it. Uh, we believe that those that are a part of this online gathering will get ministered to. Yeah. So please share it. Enjoy the worship. We love you guys. Bye.
get up now and ride. And here we go. This is it. This is the conclusion of our series. Uh, let's try this again. This is part five. We have five weekends of this. And so we're going to jump right into this. Really uh, stoked to be able to teach the word and preach the word today. And uh, my, my prayer today is that this just really encourages you in your walk with God and in your journey with God to continue to do what God's called you to do. So let me pray, and, and then we're going to jump right in. Uh, Father, I thank you today for everybody joining in. I pray in the name of Jesus that they receive revelation, that they're empowered by the word. They're encouraged by the word. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that their spirit is stirred and lifted in the name of Jesus because of your word, God. I pray that they are encouraged in the mighty name of of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. So here we go. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. All right. And as you're, I'm going to read it in a minute. I just want to tell you where I'm going. But here we go. Uh, I want to just talk about today. Let's try this again with respect to your life and your journey with God. Because in your journey with God and in your walk with God, you're going to step out in faith. You're going to try some things. You're going to do what you feel like God's calling you to do. And um, you're going to make mistakes along the way. You are going to fail along the way. You are going to slip up and fall along the way. And um, that can take on different types of slipping up and falling and failing. Um, you know, uh, and Peter is a great example of this. Um, he, when he walked with Jesus as a disciple, when Jesus was walking the earth as a man, Peter messed up plenty of times. And it was his mouth more times than not that got him into trouble. Okay. Like he tried to stop Jesus from fulfilling his purpose because Peter didn't understand what it meant, the cross and what would that. And so Jesus told him, look, get behind me, Satan. You're concerned. You're not concerned with basically Jesus told him, I'm paraphrasing. You're not concerned with the purposes of God. Okay. Um, and so uh, there's other, he, he denied him three times, okay? So Peter messed up along the way. But the beautiful thing about God's grace and God's purpose in Peter and then Peter's willingness is that Peter tried it again and he got it right. And so multiple times in the book of Acts, Peter preaches his, the mouth that was used for the devil, literally in a certain context, Prior to um, he get him getting baptized in the Holy Spirit, he now used to glorify God and thousands of people got saved, okay? So, um, so we're gonna just talk about uh, how when we do mess up and when we do fall short or when we just don't get it or we just um, ignorantly um, are just working it out and um, I wanna encourage you that there's grace for you to get back in there. Look at Peter's life. He got back in there and he was preaching on the day of Pentecost. Um, uh, there's multiple times in the book of Acts where there was a moment, persecution. He's, he's, um, he's, he's, be, he's brought before uh, religious leaders and, and, and he's preaching the gospel. So his mouth, the mouth that got him into trouble before is the mouth that God used to bring impact to the kingdom of God. So this is the thing, if there's areas of your life where you've had consistent mishaps, because Peter was consistent with his mouth messing up with his mouth, um, I really believe this, that the area of your life where there's been a consistent struggle, I believe that there's redemption in that area and purpose in that area, to and that area to be used for the kingdom of God, okay? I see it in Peter's life, and I believe it's the same in yours, okay? So I hope this is just encouraging you today. And when we mess up, the devil will 
will wants to keep us there, wants to use it against us, wants to condemn us, wants to, um, you know, capitalize on our weaknesses, all right? And that's what he tried to do with Peter. So look at this, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. It says, lest Satan should take advantage of us. Okay, that's what he tries to do. The devil tries to take advantage of us. Demons try to take advantage of us. But here it says, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Okay, the Bible talks about in Ephesians 6, the armor of God and how this armor of God is what we utilize in the spirit to stand against the wiles or the schemes of the devil. So the devil has schemes, the devil has wiles. And I, I, want, I want to give you the definition of the word wiles, okay? It says in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, that these are devices, intentions, strategy and planning from the enemy to take advantage of us. When we mess up, try to take advantage of us because of where we come from. Try to take advantage of us because of our humanity. But we are not ignorant. I'm going to give you some, some, some tools here, some, some, some scripture and some truth today and in the grace of God so that you can stand against and we can expose how he operates. Okay, this word wiles, wiles in the Greek, it's out of Ephesians 6, devices, wiles, schemes. It means this, it means a predictable preset method uh, used in, to organize evil doing. Okay, that's what the devil does, that's what it means. That's his schemes, his devices, his wiles. That's what it means in the Greek. It's predictive preset method. It's a predictive preset method used in organizing evil doing and well-crafted trickery. Okay, that's how he operates. He wants to take advantage. He's, he's just, he wants to deceive. He wants to lie to us, especially when we fall down. The Bible says in Revelation that the devil is the accuser of our brethren. Okay, that's, he accuses he condemns and he uh, wants to take advantage and capitalize on our weaknesses. So here's, here's three devices uh, and schemes of the devil. Number one, comparison. When we fall short, when we mess up, when we look at our humanity, the devil will use comparison. The Bible says, don't compare yourselves among yourselves. In doing that, you actually are deceiving yourself. It's a work, comparison is a work of the enemy, okay? He will get us comparing our journey with somebody else's journey and depression will set in. Anxiety will set in, discouragement will set in, insecurity will set in. The devil will use comparison, especially when we're looking at something we just can't get together. An area of our life we are working on, an area of our life we have fallen in and failed in time and time again. The devil will capitalize on that and get you comparing yourself to somebody else. All right, comparison to scheme of the devil. Here's another one, fatigue. The Bible says Jesus cast out a spirit of infirmities. Infirmity is weakness, okay, and fatigue. He, he will wear us down until we feel we can't, we don't have the strength to do it again, okay, to, to, to try this again. He'll, 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 he'll deceive us with comparison and he'll wear us down with fatigue and the spirit of infirmity and weakness, okay? Okay, here's another one. These aren't all of them. I just wanna give you some um, that I feel like I, I just led by the Holy Spirit to share specifically with you today. The, the next one is doubt, right? The Bible talks about an evil heart of unbelief. So doubt is evil, okay? People that doubt, it's not that they innately are evil, it's that the devil uses doubt. He lies, he, deceive, he deceives, and he tries to plant doubt in our mind, okay? And so he, he will try to, to drain you of all hope so that you look at your dream, the vision God has given you, and in the future God has given you, and you'll say, forget it. Like, what's the use? It won't happen. It can't happen. I've tried it. It's not working. And he will use that. He will take advantage and use it to plant seeds of doubt, all right? Plant seeds of doubt. So once again, the devil schemes, comparison, fatigue, and doubt, okay? So Ephesians 6, 11, all right? Ephesians chapter six, verse 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of 
the devil, all right? The wiles of the devil. So, so I want to encourage you to do it again, to get back up. Get back up on that horse, okay? Uh, step out again on that boat. Um, take a step of faith. Get out there in faith and try it again. Let's try this again. Don't let the devil win. Because look, every step of faith, there's going to be failure along the way. You're not going to get it all right. Praise the Lord that you don't have to get it right all the time. God's grace is there. He's going to honor your faith. He's good. God's going to honor your diligence. And he's going to honor your faith. And faith is what gets us up and gets us out there again. Even when we fail. Even when we miss it. Even when we don't get it right. We're not supposed to. We never will. So let's get out there again and let's try it again. So be encouraged, church. Get up. And try it again. The Bible says a righteous man falls seven times and gets up. And gets up. And get and gets up. Do not let the devil um, uh, lie to you and deceive you into thinking it is over. It is. It is never over. It is never over. There is. I, I say this all the time. There is. There is no dead ends in your journey with God. Okay. There. There is no. You know those signs. Not a through street. It's. It in God. He will make a way. And even when we mess up and we're working this out, God will not discard you um, because you tempted something to do for him, because you're stepping out in faith. The, the key isn't that you do it perfectly. The key is that you keep doing it, okay? The, the, the key to your walk with God isn't absolute perfection um, from the onset. It's that you get out there in faith and, and you will fail and stumble along the way. It is, it, I mean, like I said before, just look at Peter's life and the redemption that that man experienced with all of his issues. And you, you look at him in the gospels and you see him messing up and getting revelation and receiving from Jesus at times, but still messing up. And then in the book of Acts, he rises up and he preaches and thousands of people get saved. Okay, and so we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. So what do you do when you fail, when you fall? Because I want to tell you what to do because it's going to happen. Uh, I'm not even, and sometimes we talk about failure or a failing or falling as this like maybe this extreme type of falling or failing or you know what I mean? And, um, and in people's walk with God, that has happened. And they've repented and turned to Jesus and, and God has gotten them back on course, right? But even in the little, even some of these things, it might not necessarily be a, a huge quote unquote failure into sin. It could just be you failed or you feel like what I'm trying to do for God isn't working. It doesn't, I don't feel successful in this. Um, but even in that, um, that that's, the, that's the title of the series this month. Let's try this again, okay? And so here it is. When you fall, when you fail, when it doesn't work out as planned, as, as you thought, um, I, I love this question. And I, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is in your failure or falling or, or, or figuring out God's, God's path and journey for you, is don't give up, don't stay down. The righteous, a righteous man falls seven times and gets up. What does that tell you? He keeps falling, but he's righteous and he gets up, okay? It's gotta be this persistence in your spirit. The woman with the issue of blood pressed through the crowd to get to Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus had to shout. Others told him to shut up. He had to press in. He, the Bible says he cried out a great deal more. They kept going. There was opposition, but they kept pressing. There was opposition, but they kept crying out. You got to understand that there is spiritual opposition against your life, and it's not because you're doing something wrong. It's because you're, you're being obedient. Obedient to, to God will cause opposition to come your way, okay? And here it is. This is the question I ask. What story 
do I want to tell? Okay? When, when this situation you're in is nothing more than a story I'm going to tell. Like, what story do I want to tell? All right? I might be in a fight right now. You might be in some sort of process. You might be in some sort of struggle, some sort of tussle in your soul, your spirit. And look it, it's not going to be forever. So you need to ask yourself, what story? Because this is going to, I'm going to continue on. You're going to continue on in your walk. And this trial, struggle, pressure, temptation is seasonal. So what story do you want to tell? And allow that question to challenge you to be faithful. So when you tell the story, you can say, man, I went through this, but I remained faithful to God. I went through this, but I kept pressing in. So what story do you want to tell when the, in, when the situation you are in right now will be nothing more than a story you're going to tell? Okay, so here it is. Number one, what do I do? Number one, here's my first point. When you face some sort of failure or some sort of effort in a, in a way and you got to just pick yourself up and go at it again, number one is you must settle and reinforce your identity. You must, you must determine, okay? This must be defined. You must know this from the word of God, who you are in Christ. Your, your identity must be settled and it must be reinforced. And I'm gonna say this, it must be enforced, okay? So put yourself in your Christ-given place. Put yourself in your place. What place is that? that you are the righteousness of God in Christ, that you are a son of God, that you are a child of God, you are an heir of Christ, you are, you are an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ, okay? That you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. In him, you are complete. You are accepted in the beloved. Um, you know that you have been given the victory, that you are more than a conqueror. You are an overcomer. So that must be settled because failure and falling and trial and tribulation and learning how to get this thing right, those situations and environments are gonna test who you know that you are. That is the test. When Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he was tempted of the devil for 40 days and 40 nights. And the temptation, the, from a macro perspective, was questioning his identity, if you are the son of God. He already was, but the devil was attempting to deceive him in his identity. If you're gonna get back up and you're gonna try this again, you gotta settle and reinforce your identity. You must answer the question, who am I in Christ, okay? And meditate on that, all right? And this is the thing, this, I'm, I'm saying, let's bring, bring this into your prayer time. When your identity is founded, here it is, I'm gonna give you this from my notes. When your identity is founded in the wrong place, you will always end up out of place. When your identity is founded on a person, place, or thing, or an achievement, or a success, or a failure, or anything other than Jesus, you will find yourself out of place because your identity is founded in the wrong place. You are gonna follow and live out where your and who your identity is founded in and upon. Failure is not final, okay? You may have failed, but you are not a failure, okay? You need to know who you are because the events in your life, even if they're by your own um, abnormation, like your own choice, under your, your own will and, 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 and something that you are personally accountable for, even in that, that is not who you are. That is what has happened to you. Those are some bad choices. We tell our kids, you are not bad children. But sometimes you do make bad choices, right? You are not a bad child. You are not a bad, that's not, so, so, so bad choices don't tell you who you are. You just made a bad choice, all right? So you're, and look at the devil will attempt to deceive you into thinking that the event of failure is part of who you are. That's what the devil will do, is he will attach your failure, he will try to deceive you into intertwining that 
in who you are, all right? That's why it's so important that you settle, enforce, and reinforce who you are in Christ, okay? So look at, also, your issues, we all have them. Your issues are not who you are. Issues are what you're dealing with, right? You, we deal with issues, but it is not me. It is not you, right? It's something we deal with. Can I get an amen, somebody? There may be something you deal with. It may very well even be a current condition of something. You, it's, it's a pattern, a habit, it's a condition. It may be a condition, but even a condition is not who you are because I know who you are. The, whatever the Bible says, who you are in Christ, whatever Jesus died for, that is who you are. You are everything God said you are. In Christ. That is who you are, okay? That is who you are. Here we go, Colossians 2, verse 9. I'm gonna read this quickly. Ver Colossians 2, verse 9 and 10. Here, This is an identity scripture, okay? For, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10, and you are complete in him. So any success or failure, situation, circumstance, other people, other environments, money, lack of money, none of that stuff is who you are because who you are is in Christ and in Christ you are complete. That tells us that every other thing that we place our identity in will fragment us and cause us to live in a place of being incomplete. But you are complete in him. This is Colossians 2.10. You need to know this. You are complete in him who is the head of all principality and power, all right? You must settle and reinforce your identity in Christ. All right, so once again, Colossians 2, 9 and 10, you are complete in him. Look at if you wanna know who, your identity in Christ, this is a really easy, practical way to do it is do a word study on every verse that's talking about in him, in Christ, in God. It's speaking of your identity. In, I mean, there are so many. Ephesians and Colossians alone are full of verses speaking of who we are in him. In him, in Christ, in Christ Jesus, in God, all the in, right? Because we are in him. The Bible says in Acts, that in him we live and move and have our being, okay? He holds us together, all right? And so knowing that, 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 that is the most important. You need to settle that. You, that needs to be settled. Settle the identity issue. Settle it and reinforce it, okay? Settle it and reinforce it. Live in it, pray it, talk about it, Declare that over your own life, okay? Don't let the devil lie to you and deceive you into thinking other things and whatever is, who, no, it's not who you are, okay? So, but when you're in a condition, when you're working through something, when God is putting his hand on something that he's desiring for you to get free of, for you to get delivered of, and there is things in you that just being human, there, there, there's weaknesses and and brokenness and issues in all of us that we are working out. Here is, here's what we do, is we acknowledge the condition, okay? Be honest about the issue. So settling your identity is, is not denial of an issue, it's just settling who I am. So I, this is who I am, and I'm a, in Christ, in His grace and love, I'm gonna work on this, but this thing, this issue, this infirmity, this habit, this sin is not who I am. I'm gonna work on this. I'm gonna apply the word to this. I'm gonna pray. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make myself accountable. I'm gonna bring other people into my world so they can help me walk out this stuff. But this is the thing, acknowledge the condition, be honest about the issue, but don't allow it to be absorbed into the, your value and worth, all right? Uh, your value was demonstrated on the cross. You are worth dying for, okay? Um, so if the devil can get you to think failure is your identity, he will destroy you, okay? He will destroy you. That's step one. 
is he'll, he, is he, if he can get you on an identity level, you will find yourself in a dark place. The devil came to do nothing but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So this is my, this is my second point, is honestly assess yourself, okay? This is, this is good stuff here. This is, this is if you wanna grow up, you could turn this off right now if you don't wanna grow in God, okay? Just turn it off and hopefully you'll just start with the identity part. But, it, but and I'm serious, but if you wanna grow, I want you to stay right here with me. If you wanna grow, if you wanna, if you wanna grow in your faith, this is it, is because you're gonna face failure. You're gonna face issues. You're gonna be confronted with your jealousy. You're gonna be confronted with your gossip. You're gonna be confronted with your selfishness. You're gonna be confronted, you know, these things, these issues, these sin, like in our walk, you're gonna be confronted with pride, the pride that, that, that you deal with. You know, I don't know what it is, but in your walk with God, this is the reality of a walk with God, that you're gonna have moments going, man, I need to deal with this. Man, I, man, this is not good, right, this thing. It's not who I am, but it is something I am dealing with. But here, here it is. You gotta be honest. Be honest. Honestly assess yourself. John chapter eight, verse 31, it says this. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. This is what we're talking about right here. You gotta get in the word, abide in the word, live in the word, and it's gonna bring some stuff up, right? Verse 32, John eight thirty-two, And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. It's the truth that you know that makes you free. It's the truth that you receive that makes you free. It's the truth that you get intimate with. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Truth is absolute. Truth is this is right. This is wrong. This is who Christ is. This is this is this is your issue. Okay? And and so and so in honestly assessing yourself, you know, um, ask yourself the question in in your walk when things aren't working out. When you fail, when you fall, when you have a mishap, when you, whatever, whatever it is, how do I get up again? Number one, settle identity. Number two, honestly assess yourself. Well, how do I do that, Pastor Sean? Here's an example. I'm going to give you some questions to ask yourself. What did I do wrong? Right? I, you're not wrong as far as your identity. You're, you're not the wrong person, but you might have did something wrong. Your approach might have been, what did I do wrong? Here's another one. How could have I done this differently? <laughs> okay. How could I have done this differently? Um, here's another one. What was I missing? Okay. Look, at this process isn't to beat yourself up. Okay. This isn't um, like self-deprecating. This is self-assessment under the light of the word of God. That we're just going to look at the word of God, that what the spirit of God is convicting you of and saying, God, what did I do wrong? What could have I done differently? What was I missing? Right? So this isn't to beat yourself up. What is this? This is a step toward maturity in your walk with God and walking in freedom. If you want to walk in freedom, you got to do this. It's applying truth and wisdom to, the, to, to be better. It's, it's applying truth to you. It's saying, God, this, this is an invitation to the truth to come into your heart and life. Okay, Psalm 86, 11. It says this, teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. So this, this is talking about the way of God and, and inviting the truth. It's, it, this is not, this is not, to, this isn't sulking. This isn't beating yourself up. This isn't, um, you know, this isn't just self-consumed inner thoughts. No, this is God. Uh, give me your truth. Th this is really forward thinking. This is future thinking. This is journey of God. This is, I want to get on, I want to stay on this journey. This is God as a future for me. And in this moment, in this season, God's saying, let's deal with this right now. So, so look, a bad decision, you know, or, or, or a bad season is a bad season. So, so let it be that, a season. Man, I'm really going through a bad season. Well, praise the Lord that it's a season. It's not who you are. It's just a season or, or a tough process. But in that process, God, um, you know, I, teach me your way. Oh, Lord, I, I, I will walk, walk 
in your truth. All right? Walk in your truth. Here's another one. 1 Timothy 2.4. I'm going to go quickly. Who desires all men to be saved. Here it is. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. To come to the knowledge of the truth. This is God's heart for us, that we would be saved and come to the knowledge, knowing intimately the bottom line truth of where I am and what God is doing in my life right now, all right? And here's my last point. Here it is, never go alone. Never go alone. In your walk, when you're gonna try this again, I I encourage you to invite others into the process. Invite trusted confidants. Invite mentors. Invite those that you trust their word and what they speak into your life. Invite people in. In the multitude of counsel, their safety. Never go alone. And you know, and, and we, we need others in our walk. There's something so powerful about having an openness to God and his truth intimately between you and him alone and to welcome other trusted people that have fruit, that have a healthy track record and they don't have to be perfect, but they have fruit. They are stable, they have a track record, and you're like, man, I can trust what they tell me. I can trust their guidance, all right? So uh, Proverbs 1 verse five, a wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel, okay? So, So this is what, you need to create an environment where you just listen. You need to put yourself around somebody where you just listen. You're the listener, not the talker. Look, I know that, I'm a talker by nature, I love to talk, but I personally need to, and I intentionally put myself in environments, whether it's a phone call, a Zoom call, whatever it is, based on our current climate, I put myself in a place where I'm just sitting, I listen, and I ask questions, okay? Um, Here it is, here's my question, we're almost done. Do you have a been there, done that type person in your life, where they've literally been there and done that? Who in your life has been where you're going, and they've done what you've already, what you're doing. That is very, very important. All right, Proverbs eleven fourteen. I'm gonna close with this verse. Where there is no counsel, the people fall. All right? And if you're gonna try this again, invite counsel. If you're gonna take a step of faith out there, invite counsel. Where there's no counsel, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for this word and I pray that your people, God, not only encounter you in this season, but I pray that they will walk in freedom as a result of receiving your word and inviting the truth of your word into their life. I pray that this is, everybody out there, I pray this is their biggest growth season in God that they've ever walked in. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now's the time for you to accept Jesus into your heart and invite him into your life and receive his love for you. And so if that's you, if this is your first time or your your first time back in a long time, uh, this moment is for you to receive Jesus. He is our salvation in this life and the life to come. And so if that's you, please repeat this prayer after me and say, Jesus, I come to you a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I repent. I turn from my sin and I turn to you. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I believe that God raised you from the dead. I believe in the name of Jesus. I am saved. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Congratulations, praise the Lord. This is where where it's at right here. If you prayed that prayer, I wanna give something to you. I wanna give you a tool to help you grow in your walk with God. Uh, I wanna send you a link to a a seven-day Bible study on just walking out your faith and growing. So if you wanna grow, please text the word grow to 323-405-3232. Text the word GROW to 323-405-3232 and we will send that to you. Congratulations. We wanna connect with you. We wanna help you in your walk with God. We're praying for you. We love you. 
Peace. All right, church. So now it is time for tithing and offering. I'd like to start off by sharing a verse with you all, and that's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. The verse says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So I was looking at different commentary and just meditating and reflecting on this verse. And what I came to realize is that tithing for God is not about the money, but it's about the posture of our hearts. It's really about us being grateful to God for what he provides us with. I was thinking a little bit about my own journey with tithing and it hasn't always, I haven't always been a cheerful giver. Sometimes I just felt like for religious purposes, I need to be giving my money to the church or giving my tithe to the church. But when I started reflecting on who God is and his provision, it really changed the posture of my heart to more of a posture of gratitude. So I really, when I'm giving, I'm just encouraged to give because if God chose to, he wouldn't give me any money. He wouldn't give me a check. He wouldn't, you know, like provide if he didn't want to, but he's such a good God that he provides for each and every one of us. And I think that it, you shouldn't feel like convicted or condemned, but you should feel encouraged, you know, to have that gratitude and show God that you are grateful for what he provides you with. And I just want to encourage you guys to give, you know, but give with a cheerful heart. And I love that we already have that in this community. We have a lot of cheerful givers and people that are giving generously to our community. And we just want to go ahead and thank you guys for that. And if you guys are interested in giving, please go ahead and text the word Hopeland to the number 77977. If you guys can please close your eyes and join me as we pray today for our tithes and offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today thanking you for allowing us to be here in your presence today, learning more about you and growing in our relationship with you, Father. We thank you that you are a God that provides, not only financially, but in all aspects of our lives that we need provision in, Father. I pray that you give us wisdom and help us be good stewards of the resources and, that rela and the relationships that you have placed under our care. I also pray for wisdom for those handling the funds that are given to the church, that your kingdom continues to grow with this money that is given, Father. And I pray for blessings over those that are giving today and just blessings for everyone that has joined us in this online service, Father. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. Thank you. All right, what's up, Popland Church? So we have two announcements coming up. First announcement is Hope Groups. They're going to start this week, so please make sure to sign up. Text the word GROUPS to 323-405-3232. Me personally, I'll be joining the young adults and the men's group. Uh, my homie Mike is going to be leading the men's group, so I'll join it. We're going to re be reading books. Uh, there's also other groups that you could join, uh, such as women's, uh, prayer, outreach, and others. Uh, our second announcement is Girls Track, which is the front door of our church. If you want to get more connected with Hopeland Church or know more about the history of Hopeland Church, Growth Track is your next step. So please text the word NEXT to 323-405-3232. And have a good one, Hopeland Church. And this is Gia, Nico, and Luciano's data. <laughs> he doesn't have a name anymore. We don't have names I'm anymore. I'm Gia's dad. <laughs> and this is her mama. Let's try this again.
But it might work. It's not it might work. <laughs> Let's do it that again. One more, more time. One more time. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> Get involved. And do this right now. If you're watching this right now, share it. <coughs> share it. Share. Click the share button. Share it. Share it. Share it. Share it. Okay. All right. We ready? All right. Ready? Last Quiet time. on set. All right. That's it. Yeah. What happened? Can you guys scoot a little bit more over there? Uh, yes. Yeah, just... Okay. Joss is outside. Sketch us. You know what I'm saying? We out here preaching the gospel. You know what I'm saying? We out here grinding. We out here in the grit and the grind with Jesus and his grace. You know what I'm saying? I'm never ready, Pedro. You just gotta fake it till you make it. <laughs> Second announcement. And... But I ain't got a lady. I ain't married. None of that. No kids. Single. So, y'all ain't know. Second announcement. <laughs>